college football's greatest coach, Joe Paterno. It's Friday night before Penn State's big game against Wisconsin, and their 78-year-old head coach, Joe Paterno, is leading the pep rally. People say to me, what are you going to get out of it? What are you going to quit? I can't go back to Brooklyn. There's no more grass. When I came here 55 years ago, 56 years ago, I looked at this place and I said to myself, God almighty, what am I doing here? For me to have been a part of what has happened here, to walk into that stadium, which I'm going to walk in tomorrow, and we're going to have towels waving, and we're going to have a white, white section, and we are going to be the loudest, raucous crowd that ever watched a football game. What does it feel like to play meaningful games in November again? That's got the juices oh, going, yeah. right? No, no. Sometimes I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning, for, you know, because I'm all excited about my team right now. Coach Paterno said he'd had his eye on you from that day forward when you were like 14 years old. Yes. Uh, came in my eighth grade year, I believe, I ran a 4 4. So that was pretty good for an eighth grader. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was like the second fastest time at the camp. And, um, I felt, uh, I felt, you know, honored just to meet somebody like that so early. Paterno was determined to bring Williams to Penn State and took an unusually personal step to make that happen. We have a copy of his handwritten letter to you, March 9th, 2004. He says, ordinarily, I don't recruit in the spring, but this year, the first day we're allowed to be on the road, I'm going to be at Eleanor Roosevelt High School. I want to make sure you know how much we want you. How important was this personal letter? And that was very important, you know, um, just for him to write a personal letter like that. Usually I was getting typed letters, probably. I didn't know if it was from the head coaches or not. Joe Paul is a legend coach. He's, uh, his name speaks for itself. Paterno has been around the game of football for more than six decades. In the 1940s, he was a high school football player in Brooklyn. Paterno played at Brown University and then followed his coach, Rip Engel, to Penn State as an assistant in 1950. Sixteen years later, he got the top job. Third day, we're with third and two. Come on, get to the ball. Let's go. Paterno had remarkable success in his first four years, going undefeated twice and winning 23 consecutive games. That got the attention of NFL owners, and one of them came calling. In the early 70s, the Patriots, Sullivan family, I guess, then old, owned the team. Yeah, they offered you the head coaching job and a piece of the team. Is that the closest you ever came to leaving Penn Absolutely. State? Absolutely. In fact, I told Billy, Billy Sullivan I was going to take that job at night and then went to bed with my wife. I said, you know, you're going you're gonna to sleep with a millionaire tonight. And she was crying. I said, what the heck are you crying about for crying out loud? <laughs> she said to me, what are you taking a job for? I said, well, money. And she said, well, we don't need it. Well, how much money do we need? You know, are you going to be happy? Uh, uh, so I called Bill up and I said, uh, Bill, Mr. Sullivan, I said, don't come down. I said, don't fly down. I said, I'm, I'm not going to take the job. So Paterno stayed at Penn State and built the program into an even greater powerhouse. He's going for the bundle. Garrity, touchdown. In 1983, they beat Georgia for their first national championship. Four years later, they faced Miami in what is still the most watched college football game of all time. Take me back to one of your greatest victories, the Fiesta Bowl, end of the 86 season, January of 87, against a great Miami team with the Heisman Trophy winner, Vinny Testaverde. He intercepted him four or five times. It was viewed as an upset, gave you the national championship. Jimmy Johnson's a great coach, and that was a great team. Uh, but they didn't want to beat us. They wanted to humiliate us. You know, I remember sitting down with the squad and saying, now look, it's a football game. They're going to make some mistakes. We're going to make some mistakes. And uh, when they make mistakes, let's take advantage of them. You know, not, not knowing what I was talking about, really. You know, you can't be sure. Uh, but sure enough, it worked out that way, you know, and you walked off the field thinking, like, you're a pretty smart coach. <laughs>